today, Wednesday, uh, we have scheduled. Hi, Joyce. Um, this live, I'm going to be talking to Saida. Hi, my love. It's working. It's yes. working. Hopefully, the internet will allow us to do this live smoothly. Yeah, if it not, will. well, it is just life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how are you, lovely? I'm fine. I'm super excited. I, I always say that I get more nervous when I do Instagram lives than, I, than when I go into a stage. So I am like, ah, I just peed three times and I need to drink a lot of water and all that stuff. <laughs> I totally understand you. I'm absolutely the same. And, and just to give a little bit of context, because we have about seven, five people uh, watching us at the moment, but uh, some more might join us uh, in a little bit. And also this live will be available for 24 hours. Uh, so just to give a little context today, I am talking with one of my favorite human beings in the world. She is Saida. She is a superwoman. She is a dancer. She has so much resilience. She's so strong. She's beautiful. And she's one of the most mature people I've ever met and have the pleasure to talk with whenever we get together or through these FaceTime calls and everything. And the purpose of our talk today is body love. We're going to tackle uh, issues that um, for us, especially as women, we, we can talk as well uh, about men, but I think we have this example of, you know, because we, we live in a woman's body. Um, uh, and uh, so I want to tackle that because as a photographer, I deal with that every day. Uh, my clients come to me with uh, so many worries and fears and they're absolutely normal. And Zaida the same and what she does through her dance teaching is absolutely liberating and because I also took photos of her for her new website and for everything we thought that this could be a great chance for us to put these strengths together and our uh, opinions together within this. Is everything okay, Saida? Did I see you? <laughs> oh, an introduction. Oh my God, Luisa. <laughs> everything is okay. Yes, thank you very Great. much for the love and yeah, for the good introduction. Uh, yeah, Luisa is my favorite photographer, I just have to say, and she's the best photographer in the world. And yeah, <laughs> as she said, no, it's true. As she said, like there are many things. I, well, I have to say also, I haven't, I haven't tried many different photographers, but I won't because I know her and, and I just don't want to, to switch to other ones. So and I you don't need... You should. Uh, yeah, I don't, but I don't need to. I, I mean, I don't need to try other photographers because I'm happy with her. And uh -huh. yeah, she said we did, uh, we did a photo shoot a couple of days, two days actually, oh, of yeah. a photo shoot. And yeah, it was, I have to say, it was my very, like, my uh, longest photo shoot in terms of like, I always, like, I've, I'm used to being like photographed for two hours, maybe three hours, but not to walk on the park and to find and to change clothes and to change makeup and to, and to pose as she made me pose. That, that we're going to talk about that in a bit. So yes, yes. Um, well, I think, I think we should give a little bit of context on how we met because it also... I think, I think it could be empowering as well and showing uh, how, you know, life is just not linear and that we're mm -hmm. fighters and achievers and we do all that we do to achieve, you know, a big goal well, we in, my won. Case, in my case in photography in London. So I moved over here almost four years ago and I had to start everything from scratch, building my audience and everything from scratch. And I've done many side jobs uh, in London and one of them was... Uh, when I met you working as a waitress at Buckingham Palace. <laughs> glamour, hasn't that have got like this, all the glamour there, <laughs> eating all the sandwiches behind the scenes, the queen sandwiches. <laughs> so I, I, I definitely fell in love with you on that day because you were so kind and you were so sweet. And uh, we, just, we just kept the connection going and very quickly learned that I was a photographer and I learned that you are a belly dance teacher and so very quickly, we just started learning more about each other and you were relaunching your website and you were working on your social media, which by the way, well done. You've done an amazing work because mm. you have reached 10,000 plus subscribers on YouTube and it all comes from a lot of hard work, but also- 11,000 now. Damn, well yeah. done girl, well done. Yeah. But it's really because you make a difference at what you do. And uh, I love it that everyone is welcome in your classes and 
there is no judgment at all. And it is just a way, you know, to set yourself free, love yourself, embrace yourself. And uh, so I, I, I wanted to ask you before we go into the photo shoot and how you felt and, and before we tackle all our body issues and body confidence and everything, why do you dance, Aida? Why do I dance? Yes. It's a phy physiological need for me. It's like, I need to go to the toilet, I need to dance. I need to drink water, I need to dance. It just happens, like I need it. It's my natural way of expressing my emotions, of alchemizing them. And it just happens naturally. It just happens since I was very, very little. And professionally, I dance. that's another story, that's a different thing, but I also dance kind of because it's the only job that makes me happy because I have tried many other things and I've been so depressed in many other jobs like literally clinically depressed like I cannot do this job anymore and dance is the and dance and especially dance teaching is the only thing that makes me feel happy and gives me energy to carry on and to do whatever I want yeah and and, and what is what is the message what is the big goal behind your brand and your classes and uh, your business is called Dance Pandemic. And this is a name that was here way before uh, World Pandemic happened during our lifetime. You already were Dance Pandemic. You wanted to spread the joy for dance. Um, so what is yeah, the statement? What is that's, the that's exactly the, like what I do is uh, I just help women to connect with the joy of dancing. So that's my main purpose. That's my main goals. Just uh, like everyone has got the right to enjoy their bodies in different ways, in many different ways. Uh, and dance is one of them. And no divas and no preconceptions and no comparisons and no patriarchy has got the right to get that right of yours to enjoy your body, to get it away from you. And that's, my, that's kind of my mission. Not kind, that's my mission. Like I just want everybody to feel the joy of dance and that's why i call my project dance pandemic which it was a name i came up with this name like hmm, was 2015 i think or 2016 and the idea behind that pandemic is that it's something that is contagious joy is contagious oh i can see your cat your kitty tail that yeah, <laughs> he wants so, to say hello to auntie zaida Hi. hello <laughs> he always has to show up at all of my lives okay, keep going. Sorry, love so yeah i just want everyone like i i really think that joy uh, is contagious and i really think that dance is really good way to enjoy apart from the technical or professionalities behind the dance like and and all the stuff that dance could bring into your life like uh like freedom of movement physical healthy emotional health um i don't know so many things so many many things like getting rid of menstrual play, pain and menstrual cramps or empowering there are so many benefits out of dance but i think joy is the best one and is the main not the best one the main one is the main one is just having fun we are here once yeah definitely and so you spread the joy of dance uh through your youtube channel so that mm -hmm. is one of the ways and we will leave the links we will i want you to explain us everything and how people can find you and then another way is you are a Bailey dance teacher. You teach in places here in London, but during the pandemic, you've been doing those classes online, correct? That's it. Yeah. So I actually, I, just before the pandemic, I used to teach a couple of classes in Croydon yes. every Tuesday. And now those classes are online. So everyone is welcome and invited, invited to join to join those classes, not even welcome, encouraged to join those classes. I have a beginner's classes on Tuesdays at 6 like we start from scratch <clears throat> so if you have never danced it's fine you can join us and you just have fun with us that's the whole purpose of it and by the way like having fun like having fun sorry having fun yeah <laughs> having fun you're gonna learn you're gonna learn and you're gonna like own your own body so yes tuesdays at six but they can check that might change in the future because i might need to come back to my face-to-face -face classes uh, and if, if that happens, then I might move the classes to a different day of the week, but they can find everything in my website. Dance Pandemic, it's an easy, it's, it's very easy to definitely. remember. Amazing. Yeah. And, and I did see, I did see what dance does for you. I did see how free you are when, when you dance. 
And it's interesting that when we were uh, to do our photo shoot, um, well, I didn't, I didn't know that, well, and it's natural. I just, I just should have thought about it before that we have, you know, we're self-conscious about things about our bodies and then uh, there's always something that we're not happy about, which is, which is, you know, it's very sad because we weren't born with these. We weren't born with these fears. They were imposed on us, you know, mm -hmm. we, be sexy, but not too much. Be skinny, but not too much. Have some junk in the trunk, but not too much. What are those stretch marks? You know, and, and, uh, and, it's, and it's just so sad that especially us girls, we grow up in this bubble of always having to achieve uh, perfectionism that is just so unfair. And then it just spreads across everything and it spreads across how we deal with other people, how we see ourselves in society and everything. And it was so liberating and so beautiful to see. So when you came, we started doing your photos in my flat and and you put on the first dress um the first uh, outfit for belly dancing and i thought you were so beautiful and you said specifically do not photoshop my stretch marks mm -hmm. show my body exactly as it is mm -hmm. because i want to show and it's one of the messages of dance pandemic is that this is for everyone really everyone um tell me a little bit about what you felt and how you were and and just how it evolved during the photo shoot as well. Yeah, well, I have to say that that photo shoot, especially that one we did in your flat, because I felt really exposed. I was very like self-conscious and I felt vulnerable, but I was like, can I, can I swear in, the, in your Instagram? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was like, fuck it. I have to do it. Like, just do it. Like, I am, I am scared as fuck, but I'm going to do it anyway, because... I wish I had someone like myself showing their body like and nothing happens you know when I was younger when well, I was afraid up, like, yeah well, while growing up. up so so I no, it's not that I did this photo shoot to become that person for anyone else I did it for myself and also for my website but that was that that was and that's still my mission like uh, kind of like yeah, just showing that it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I have a stretch marks. I have like what they call in English the love rolls, which is a very cute name. And <laughs> I have, yeah, my body, it is what it is. And it's me and it's part of me and shouldn't be ashamed, even though sometimes I am. And that's why I felt that way. But also confronting myself on that photo shoot, like just putting myself in front of the camera and realizing afterwards, uh, afterwards that nothing happened. And it's like, it's fine. And then as a result, I have a, a bunch of super amazing, beautiful photos with a lot of, oh, my bottle of water. Sorry. Uh, I have a, <laughs> a, a, an amazing collection of photos that show what I am. You know, that, wow, I have goosebumps. Like, I remember when you, when you sent me the photos over, when they were finished, I couldn't believe, like, because I... You. I it was you. And yeah, it's like... Going. All your wow. magic and splendor and wholesomeness and and just everything and it's it was just so beautiful to see you along well it, not just with your photo shoot but it is natural as soon as I see you know a client or a, a, a couple there's always that mm, 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 beginning like awkwardness but mm -hmm. uh, and then you just set yourself free like a butterfly after that it was so lovely it was also important for me to know that you had a safe space for you to express yourself but also i am on your side completely on your side it's just it's so beautiful and empowering to see and work with someone who just loves herself and who embraces every little singer delicious corner you know? And it's not, I'm, I mean, that's not a goal that I have achieved. And I don't think that's something I'm going to achieve. Like, it's I love myself, progress. period. It's an everyday job. It's like, yeah, I don't like my body. I don't like myself. Fuck it. I don't mind. I'm just going to do it anyway. And I did it. And then I like the result. And it's like, wow, I should have done this before, you know? Yeah, like, it's always kind of confronting that voice that comes from in, inside you, but it's not your voice. It's something that's been stolen, as you said, as you no, very well said before. Yeah, that is ingrained in you growing mm -hmm. up, and and um, 
yeah, I remember having been told, you know, smile more, you should smile more, or you should wear clothes like this, or uh, why don't you have makeup on today? What's wrong with your hair? You look ill. And it's like, it's just so much pressure that us girls it's go like, through what? every day just from existing. Not only do we have to work really hard to achieve our dreams, we also have to look really good hmm. doing it just for other people's sake and please. For their, for their and eyes. come on, like you are in your period, you are in your like in your sofa with your blanket. You don't want to look pretty. You just want to rest and be warm and cozy. And ah, what, the, what about being pretty? No way. Yeah. Did, did you did you in uh, some way discover a new Saida through the photos? From the photos, well, it, I have to say that it took me it took me a few months. At the beginning, I only have, I only kind of enjoy looking at myself in some photos, some, some of the photos, which are actually the, the ones that I am most covered with, with clothes. But I'm getting, yeah, I'm getting there. I'm still, I'm still in the process, but it's not the new, it's, it's myself, like it's, it's just kind of accepting. It happens a lot that we start loving, we learn, no, it happens a lot, no, it's natural. We learn how to love ourselves based on how other people love ourselves. That starts with our parents or carers or whatever, then carries on at school, teachers, like these reference figures. But when we get to the adulthood, it happens that we need friends and we need people to love us as we are, to be able to love ourselves, or at least that's my experience. And I think it's a really common one. So what happened when I see a photo, like, when I see myself from the eyes of another person who is you with your respect and your love and your appreciation for what I do and for what I am and for my capacities, it makes me realize that I have all of that as well. You know what I mean? It's like, wow, yes. And because I remember you pointing out, I, I'm really bad at posing. I am a dancer, not a poser, you know? So, I, and I remember you telling me, just play music and dance, because that's what I can do. And that's, that's, so I'm really, really good dancing and generating movement, but not staying static to be photographed, because I start getting awkward and shy and like, because mm, I don't see, that's not part of my identity of to be a model. And, of course. Ooh, it's so, so weird. But I remember you like, getting those poses out of my movements you know can can you repeat that and it's like yeah let's repeat that <laughs> i'll do it slow. When I'm looking through that little square like sometimes mm -hmm. it just you just see moments and they're just mm -hmm. like click 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 oh my mm -hmm. god this was just so beautiful but it would never make sense to capture you know photos of a dancer with her just being static so mm -hmm. i mean if if my job my current job was to take photos of you for your dance pandemic website i needed you to dance i needed you that's to dance. it i needed to give you the space for you to get comfortable for you to get used to my presence used to my camera and then capture you in your natural you know such a process it's a, it, it takes time yeah it's, of it's course uh... it takes time of course hmm. it, it takes time um that happens with me and uh, all of my couples but also i have for example um about a year ago, because as you know, I'm I'm separated now. I'm not I'm not uh, with my husband anymore. Mm -hmm. And I remember that I was, of course, feeling very sad as everyone goes through those hard moments. And I remember Gabriela Mate was going to take photos of me for my new website. And suddenly, for me, the timing was all wrong. I felt horrible. Just inside me, I just felt ugly and undesirable and you know all the things girls go through mm. um mm. which which are completely relevant and i was going through them and i remember that <coughs> i am a photographer and it took me a while as well and i'm a photographer but it took me a while to you know because i was Brief. going through my own things i had my mm -hmm. own image about who i was in my body and how much i didn't like myself at that and time. also the yeah and also kind of the pressure of what you want to show about yourself exactly like i want to show this and i want to hide this exactly. and you're really really like yeah completely there's, completely there's nothing and, and to hide what absolutely surprised me and i had to digest the photos for a little bit because 
I absolutely loved them, but they were not what I was used to seeing. Because normally my photos are all like smiley and happy. I just show my big set of teeth and, and that's a normal Louisa photo shoot. But in those photos, and, and they're all over my, my website now, I got to meet a different person. I got to meet a new person. And that was so fascinating. And I remember that that photo shoot was just a huge jump into loving myself again and into understanding who I was. I could not expect to go to a photo shoot and try to be the Louisa that everyone knew when that Louisa wasn't really there anymore. There was mm -hmm. a 2.0, an improved version, mm -hmm. uh, someone more mature, someone different. And it was such a breath of fresh air to finally go like, huh, this is who I am. That's, that's it. Amazing. That's totally the effect of photos. It's just seeing yourself through the eyes of other person and just getting that perspective. Yeah. That, that outsider per perspective and just being like, oh my God, this is me as well. Yeah. In any, yeah, in any, in any matter. I mean, you can see in your case, it was like feeling maybe more sad or serious or like going through this difficult period of your life, but it could also be just the opposite. Someone who is not used to be bubbly and smiley and, and then suddenly like they have all the fun doing a photo shoot. When they see their photos, they cannot see themselves that much, but that's them as well. Yeah, definitely. The recognizing in the photos. This, this, do you feel like, well, you ob obviously do, but I have to ask the question this way. Do you feel like, through dance, um, it can be the outlet that your clients and students need? Well, dance is so powerful. Emotions are in our bodies. And, and there is no such division in, in our bodies as mind and body. So whatever happens in your body is whatever is happening with you and to you. Hold on. I Yeah, did I break? No, it's because I saw like this Good. little wheel. Okay. Um, so what happens when you dance? You get to, again, confront. You either dance in front of a mirror, if you go to dance classes, to a dance studio. Now with this pandemia, we have to dance online on my website. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, yeah, if you go to a, to a dance studio and you see yourself in front of the mirror, you have to confront with what, what you see, what you thought you were and what you are seeing in the mirror. And you also have to kind of deal with uh, constant comparison with the people who is in the class with you and with the teacher. And that's something we all as a students, I'm a dance student as well, uh, have to learn how to cope with because it's really, really difficult not to compare yourself. And what happens when you compare yourself? You're always the loser. That's usually the case. Oh, there's, there's just a few people who like put themselves on the winner side we mostly put ourselves on the loser on the on the bottom uh, on the bottom side of the of the comparison so you have to deal with that and that uh triggers a lot of emotions and triggers a lot of i would say yes res resilience uh, in you to value and to improve your self-esteem is an opportunity is a window open for you to improve your self-esteem and value yourself for what you are that's from the external point of view but also from the internal point of view it happens that when you sometimes you have a block something in your body let's say uh, you have a complex with your boobs for whatever reason they are too big too small or they are different or whatever whatever you are thinking about your boobs and it happens that you have to do chest movements in your belly dance class, yeah? And then suddenly you start, like, putting those boobs in your brain. Like, you are being aware of that part of your body that is generating you these problems. And you, again, is another window open for you to work through that. And it's amazing. And that happens with, all, like, the whole body. is your face expression, your pelvis movements there's a lot of blocks there are a lot of things around sex and around our our pelvic floor around our our pelvic movements everything the way you move the way you like everyone has got two legs but nobody walks on the same way so you have to find your own way of expressing yourself and it's really difficult sometimes in dance classes as I, that's why i said before no diva 
and no preconception has got like the right to take away your right to enjoy your body because sometimes you go to a dance class and the teacher is a diva and they are just showing off yeah, i'm a super diva I, and that makes like oh uh, i'm not you i can i will never be that yeah yeah <laughs> that's not the, no 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 that's not the point it's the point is just enjoying your body as it is and finding your own way of expressing yourself and and your own Yeah, that's it, your own language, just validating yourself, validating yourself as a whole, your body and mind and emotions. And It, it takes work, but when you, when you set yourself free, it is just so rewarding for everything else. Uh, one good example is, and I definitely want to uh, join your classes, it's been a promise that has been just floating in the air, but I really need to try and, and then come back here and talk about my own experience. Um, um, one good example that I have of this is a few years ago while I was still living in Lisbon, one of my best friends, Lily, who actually lives in London now as well, she challenged me to doing a street tease class. And mm, uh, interesting, really interesting. Yeah, yeah. And, and she challenged me to do a class. And um, a lot of people see me from what I get from my friends as, you know, like, oh, you're so skinny, you have no problems, you this and that. And the fact is, I'm very self-conscious about many things about my body that mm -hmm. I shouldn't be because I know it's not from my own brain. It's from, you know, my life, my baggage, my experience and everything. But I have loads of things that I can't really deal with that well. Mm -hmm. But I remember that I took the challenge to, to, to do that striptease class And it was, it was absolutely liberating in body love, in the body love of Spectre experience. Because first of all, I had never walked in high heels outside because I am really tall. So I feel like I am taller than everyone else. So that just means that I'm calling attention to me and to my image. And that would make me cringe and feel really bad about it. And then also, like I would always hide this little, you know, muffin top and whatever. And I have my, my knees are full of stretch marks. They've always been since I was 10 years old. And before I used to hide it and I hated it and my feet are too big and whatever. And I remember when the teacher came in because I was just expecting this bombshell, you know, how we think about, you know, street mm. street teeth, teeth, stereotypes it's gonna be like, wow, you know, our preconception of what a striptease dancer should be. And when she walked in, I didn't know that she was the teacher. She was absolutely lovely, normal, just like all of us. And I was like, oh, okay, this is not what I was expecting. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And then she did a little striptease for us to see what we would be learning that day. And suddenly I was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I need to know how to do that. But it was mainly and specially because she loved herself she she knew her body and she turned it into a tool to express her inner beauty and it was mm -hmm. amazing and i remember that during that class we were about 10 students and we were only looking at ourselves in the mirror you don't take your clothes off for other people we were looking at ourselves in the mirror and we were dancing and and the techniques that she taught us and everything, I, I remember I transformed that day. I absolutely transformed. I started seeing myself as a woman, a sexual being, uh, someone who has this inner strength, you know? And that was the very first time I wore high heels and I wore high heels back home in Lisbon because I got out of that class and I felt so empowered and so proud to be a woman. And it just transformed me. So and, it, and you're talking about one class. One. Imagine, class. If, imagine if you make that process an ongoing one. And every time you go to that class, you feel that. And you get out of the class feeling that. You, at, at the end of it, Once you incorporate it. Twice a week. Yeah. Imagine what that will it's, do for you. It's just... It becomes part of your identity. It becomes part of, of yourself, of, of how you move. Yeah, I was, yeah, it's really, while you were talking about your striptease teacher, I, I was remembering, I've been teaching belly dance for 20 years already, and I've always had uh, this issue of being fat, and I've been bullied at school for being fat, and well, that's how, and my body weight uh, changes a lot, um, 
And I remember there was a period in my life when I was like, I, I think it was like 100 kilos or so, or so like a way bigger than I am now. And I was teaching, I was, a belly, I was a belly dance teacher by then as well. And I remember some people telling me like, wow, you dance so well to be that fat. And you kind of like, I kind of see myself dancing and, and able and capable of dancing because I see that you can dance. And like, we have a lot of preconceptions around what a person should be or shouldn't be based on whatever, because in this case, I'm talking about weight and the fat phobia, which is a obvious problem in our society. But we also have many other things like this sex bomb expectation you could have or this, I don't know, the, the non super shy person, innocent, that it turns out to be the like the funniest person in the party, you know, and it's, it's all about preconceptions. And we apply those stereotypes to ourselves. So we kind of feel comfortable in one of those characters, characters or more comfortable in one of those. And while you dance, it, this happens in acting classes as well. You kind of peel off some layers and you discover that you are also different things and you yeah. can also feel comfortable in different stereotypes. How do you, how do you deal with fat phobia? Because... I am one of your biggest fans and you have always been so open with the comments that people might do about you or your classes or about something you say on your social media, something you say on your YouTube videos. And I always share them because I think you are just this, you know, advocate for, for body love. Um, and how do you deal with it? First, first of all, what do you feel when that happens? And, and then how do you deal with it? Well, when I receive fat phobic comments, I feel really, I tend to feel really bad because they are trigger for my, they are triggers for my past traumas yeah. around that, about being bullied and about being isolated at school. So that makes me feel bad. Uh, but at the same time, because I'm in a different position now and I have worked on that a lot, I am able to, to confront them in a different way. I wouldn't like anyone to feel and to suffer as I have suffered in the past because of this. And also I kind of feel the need. It depends on how I'm feeling that day, but sometimes well. I feel, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, sometimes I feel the need to educate the person who is being, who is being uh, like the, the person who is attacking me. I, I kind of feel the need to like, Hey, you have a lesson to learn. What's going on? Like, have you got, like, what's your reason to be here in my video, in my YouTube channel, to tell me that I am not able to do anything? Like, I kind of had that attitude. Sometimes I just ignore them. And sometimes, like, uh, like with practice, as everything, it gets easier. So sometimes I just let it go. And, I, like, I have no time now. I have more important things to deal with right now. Whatever. You, whatever you say. It doesn't matter. But, yeah, sometimes I just mainly feel the need to reply and to educate and... It's not usually the case that it works because these people, like, whoever is telling you that is telling that to, to themselves. And it's a really hard, like, I mean, if you are fat phobic against others, you are, you are, or you would be fat phobic against you in case you get fat. And you're probably t telling, like, having that uh, fat phobia uh, dialogue with yourself, in, inside yourself. So, yeah, all I can wish for them is is to like realize and do their work and just get out of that preconception that is really, really limiting, really limitating. Sorry, I don't know how to say it. Okay, okay. <laughs> and, 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 and were you ever approached by other students who were going through the same and who had, you know, been fat shamed and who had been bullied because of their body shapes? The, hmm. Have you ever gone across? Uh, I've... <laughs> Well, I'm not a therapist, so they don't tell me their background stories. Not all of them. Sometimes they share because they feel the, the trust and they, and they approach me and they tell me oh, some stories. About these things. So it's only natural that if they feel they relate, they feel exactly. like they have a safe space to share. Not that That's you are a therapist, it. but you are a it, fellow human who's going through the same experience. Exactly. And it, and it happens a lot that I detect that. Even when they don't say anything, I'm really, really used. Like, it's my profession. I do it as a job. I'm really used to detect how people is 
feeling and how and what parts of the body are a struggle for them and not not talking about technically i'm talking about like from an emotional point of view when i see them dancing when i see someone moving and when i see some someone's uh posture i can guess that there is something going on around uh i don't know i can for example tell a lot about complex with the boobs because in belly dance we open the chest a lot i don't know if you can see me from there like we do a lot of movements like this and when someone comes to class and is this it's like okay you are kind of maybe some subconsciously mostly subconsciously you are trying to hide something like and that happens with fat phobia uh, and and with with uh, all of this shaming and self shaming around being fat so what i do in my classes is just showing myself as i am despite the shame i also feel because i also i am also fat phobic against myself it's part of the whole process and i just like just go up with my t-shirt and just show my belly and that people is like wow you have stretch mark and you have like this jelly belly blue 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 whatever and they feel and they see in me that is nothing happens it's fine it's okay so they can apply that to themselves and that's a way for me as well to learn and love myself like i mean it's a it's a it's a loop like it's um feedback i keep i keep getting from my students so i just try to make the environment as safe as as you were saying before with the photo shoot is the same thing i just want everyone to feel shave uh, not shave yeah as well if they want <laughs> to feel safe i just want everyone to feel safe and and to feel um supported and secure and in a not judge environment not judgmental environment like you can do whatever you can be yourself yeah. here that's all you need to do yeah so that's how i approach it that's lovely and and uh, on my side i i notice that you know i i work with weddings and i work with image uh, and everything and uh well not only of course comparison is the parasite it's just it's just terrible cuz you compare yourself to others it doesn't matter where wherever you go whatever challenge you're going through you are always compare yourself to others but who are doing it really well and you're always the leader you're very right at what you're saying i i compare myself all the time on instagram when i see other people's photos as a photographer but um having clients and a lot of the the biggest part percentage of my clientele is females they're women and a lot of times when they email me they want to do a photo shoot they're not quite sure if they should do it i love i love to first of all sh- schedule to meet them now i can't meet them personally but sometimes i do or we just do a facetime call i want to understand i want to understand what the fear is um what 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 seems to be the challenge for them and most times it has to do with body love it just totally does and even though um i like to say and i i am always for body love when they see edited photos of my other clients my prospective clients compare themselves to my brides and everything i have brides let's say i just shot this wedding and i posted a photo the bride who's going to get married the next weekend says oh she is so beautiful and she is so skinny i'm never going to be like that i'm so sorry and i'm like first of all sorry for what there's there's nothing to apologize for and then i need to work on why does this happen why is this happening how can i make you feel safe when i'm taking your photos how can we make this work so that when you're there you're not judging yourself constantly when i am taking your photos also do not forget this is something that happens all the time when a bride sees when a when a future bride sees the photos of another bride wedding done and everything they're comparing those brides highlights with their backstage but they can't forget that we're all human we're all going through the same and that other bride who's there and who looks beautiful and graceful and everything has gone through the exact same things has gone through the exact same issues so um it's very important to humanize it and bring it from the pedestal that they have put those people because expectations and everything it's such an important thing within my job and it's something that took me like so long to just you know 
know how to approach and work within my brides because sometimes they don't book a photo shoot because they put other people that I've taken photos of in a pedestal and they think I will never be able to be like that. I will totally. never be able to be that beautiful. I will never be able to whatever. And you know what? You already are. I think that's, that's the reason it's, it's so important for us to keep on showing ourselves as we are and yeah. that's why I told you that day that please don't photo shoot my stretch marks yeah. in my belly because this is what I am and there are a lot of dancers out there that don't dare to become a dancer because they yeah. think they don't have a dancer's body and it's the same thing with your brides so like it's the yeah. same stuff is they don't love themselves because they don't have references as well because yeah. All the, like most of, I, I, I'm not in the wedding industry, so I don't know that much, but I reckon, or at least like my stereotype and the main idea that I get is that everything is so precious and perfect. Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. What is that? Exactly. You know. <clears throat> so, and you get all of these skinny models, which are, yes, that's one kind, one body kind, one body type, but that's not the norm. Yeah. That's not yeah. the norm. There yeah. are, I mean, that's no, a, a no, tiny no, percentage. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's a tiny percentage. That kind of body is a tiny percentage of it. So you cannot, how come are you going to become someone you are not? Like, yeah, are you, definitely, definitely. it's nonsense. I, I, I speak to my brides a lot about, you know, the dangers of Pinterest, for example, which is a platform that I adore and I use as a tool for my work. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's a menace for, for your you know, self-love, body love, and everything because you immediately compare yourself. So you want that because if that is there and it's online and it has loads of pin pins, it means it's good. And if it's good for me to be as good, I need to be like that. And so a lot of times I just have to, it's all about working with expectations and I have to tell them, well, let's look at this photo you just sent me. First of all, you're in London, not in California. So the sun is not going to be the same. Second of all, the venue on this photo has nothing to do with the venue that you picked. They are both wonderful. They are just not the same. So recreating this photo is already pretty much impossible. Third of all, this is a model or another bride. Yes, she's beautiful. She is, she's glorious, but so are you. So do you're not, just different. If your goal is to go on a diet to be like this Pinterest photo, mm you need to work on your beautiful self and your beautiful body love because I see something that you are struggling to, to, to see because you, you are just gorgeous. And so my, my goal here is to work with the bride and understand how she likes to see herself in the photos. It's to understand what the issue is, what the challenge is. And hopefully, to me, it has always been happening. Just see them bloom in front of the camera and then they'll see, oh, this is who I am. But in their brains, it's just engraved this image of someone else who is, you know, according to the beauty industry and whatever. Because working at weddings is just like working for the beauty industry. Yeah. Uh, your wedding has to be better than this one and bigger and, 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 you know, and has to be more special and everything. So it's always, it's such a pressure that women go through, especially a lot of, my clients, I see it in, in a percentage wise, women are the ones who go through more stress while planning their weddings because it's not mm -hmm. just to throw a huge party, but it's also on how people are going to perceive them on, on their wedding days. And so it's just so much pressure. Um, sometimes I do have phone calls where we just talk about the pressure that they're going through. The I think, I through. think it's really, a really, a really useful, uh, tool to deal with this or to tackle this is to expose ourselves to diversity diversity like to see like just not to not to rely on on the on the wedding magazines that only show you the perfect model which is not even a bride she's yeah. a model she's yeah. a professional model look doing that real weddings. So, look real yeah weddings. real yeah. weddings with real people is the same thing with dancers like it's the same thing like i can relate a lot with your with your rights <laughs> with yeah all of these body issues body images comparison like i want this i want to be like that dancer and you keep on like seeing photo shoots of people who is not you and and they're all oh, it's so it's so ugly also against ourselves yeah and it's so limiting did you know that if we if every girl in the world loved to learn herself the beauty industry would collapse 
Mm, I could, that I could totally. It lives on the fact that we don't like ourselves enough. So we always mm, need securities. a product or something to improve who we are. But if we loved ourselves just as we are, the beauty industry would collapse. And yet I choose politically a long time ago not to wear makeup and not to pay too much attention to what I wear as, a, mm-hmm. as clothes, clothing. Mm-hmm. And so people could see me and could judge me as like, I don't know, uh, Careless, like, uh, yeah, nah, whatever. But I don't mind. This is me. I don't have anything to hide. Like, this is me. Nothing to be ashamed. This is me as I am. I'm super comfortable and super cozy with my t-shirts and with my joggers and whatever. And I don't wear makeup because I don't want to, unless I have to dance on a stage and Even I don't know how to put makeup on myself. So I, I'm always asking for help or like stealing makeup products from my friends or like, yeah. uh, how do you do this shadow or whatever? Because I just yeah. don't know. I didn't practice. It was a political decision for me This in terms of that. Like I'm fed up of this pressure. No more. Whatever. No, yeah. I, I'm not buying that. And I am an answer. And when like, I saw when I saw um, Alicia Keys going through, you know, no more makeup, I thought, wow, this is such a strong, beautiful message. In my case, it is something I am still working on because I think that my biggest self-love, body love issue slash challenge with me has been the fact that I'm 34 and I'm still dealing with adult acne. I have so much acne and I was so bullied about it at school because I started having acne when I was 10. And so it's something yeah. that I still have to work on. So I think you have, to, you have to go in with this. I mean that none of the things are wrong. You not wanting to wear makeup and me wearing makeup. It just means that we are coping and we are doing whatever we can to, you know, cope with our body love and with our body image. It's still, it's still a challenge that I'm going through, but I mean, it's also a form of art, artistic expression. So what we want to say also to the people who are watching is there is no right and wrong. What there is, it's what works for you. And what works for you, no one should have a say in it. You That's should it. Be able, you should be able to do whatever you want to, and no one should have to have a say in it. And just to give one tiny example, uh, three years ago, I was doing an engagement shoot for a couple. They were going to get married the next Saturday. So if this was a Saturday, they were going to get married the next Saturday. And as we were starting the photo shoot, and I knew, I knew this couple, and I, I had shot other weddings of friends of them, so I had known this bride for years because she was a guest at other weddings that I was shooting, and I remember that she was always very tense. She was always very tense, and she had this thing behind her head, and she was always very tense. And I tried to understand what was going on, but she didn't want to show, you know, weakness in front of her future husband, and she wanted to just be all joyful and everything. But it reached a point where she was crying. And I, and I asked, you know, we can stop. We don't have to do this. Do you want to talk? What's, what's going on? What's wrong? And she was saying that she hated her body. She just hated, absolutely hated how she looked. And I said, you're, you're, you're beautiful. Like, what's, what's, what's wrong? What's challenging you at the moment? She was like, my arms are too big. My hips are enormous. My breasts are not in the right place. And, and I said do you mind showing me your Instagram? Do you mind just showing me your Instagram? I want to understand something. And she was following Victoria's Secret models. All of them, all of them. And, and I was suddenly so sad with the poison that this was giving her and such a moment in her life that she'd be sh- so joyous, <clears throat> sorry, and so happy and so special that she couldn't even concentrate in it Because in the back of her mind, she was constantly comparing herself and thinking, I'm not perfect enough. If I'm not perfect enough, I can't be perfect enough for this human being who has chosen me to be, you know, the wife. Yeah. And, and, And this taught me so much, just working with her and just being with her on her wedding day. She was just glorious. And I believe we were able to work on a lot of that together and we became really big friends but this is just to show how poisonous uh it It is especially for us girls this is one tiny example but this is something we are hit with every day of our lives ever since we're Mm -hmm. born well it like we uh, the truth is that we have one choice one choice which is we can curate uh, what we are exposed to not fully but we can curate especially in instagram you can 
you can choose the, the accounts you follow and the, the accounts you unfollow. Easy, as easy as that. Is unfortunately, uh, uh, no, fortunately, there are many, many accounts. I'm just going to approach it in a different way. Many accounts showing different kinds of body out of the norm, which are the ones that I follow. And, the, and I just follow people that I like because they do that. And you, as like just turning the, the story, you like super sad story you just told us uh, to the other side is just exposing yourself to those people who is showing themselves as they are is making me love myself more and, and being easier on myself. And it's like, I'm being more accepting and, and validating. Yeah, I'm that, I'm that. This is like me. And there is a dancer, um, there is a hashtag, I don't remember her name right now, but the hashtag is uh, breaking the stereotype. Yeah. She is a dancer. She's a fat dancer from the United States. Um, and she's a hip hop dancer. Amazing, incredible dancer. But when you see her, it's, it's, again, it breaks your stereotype of what a dancer is. Yeah. I'm yeah. so glad I discovered this woman and I'm following her and I'm so happy to see her. Uh, all the time, I, like I'm, I'm looking forward to like do an interview with her or something. Like I really would like to interview her, uh, and because I, girl. yeah. But let's see, let's see if I have good luck and she accepts and she's not that busy and and have some time for me. But yes, I think it's so important to just expose ourselves to these kind of things. There is another yeah. choreographer yeah. for Argentina as well, who is a fat person as well, and he just show himself as he is, and that's so beneficial. The, the dark side of this is this is not still, not yet. It's not yet the norm. It's not massive. Yeah. It's getting the... Uh, there is another thing uh, which I think we should be careful with. Like being curvy... Oh, exactly what you're going to say and it's exactly what I was about to say. Being oh, curvy, yeah. like this curvy thing and curvy power is the new trend. So be careful with that trend because there is not a perfect curvy. Like, yeah. no, you cannot be the perfect curvy or the perfect model or the perfect bride or the perfect dancer, whatever that means. I mean, body diversity, it is exactly, it is exactly that, body diversity. Exactly. So not curly. I to say, like, there's, there's also nothing wrong with, you know, being skinny and being Victoria's Secret model and everything. There's nothing wrong with that. Good for them. Totally. What, what I mean is you should feel empowered by examples that make you feel more whole, not by mm. examples that bring you down. Exactly. And it's so, it's so great to find, you know, people that you relate with, with their messages or with what they do. And it just, it just empowers you. And you can even, you know, achieve a little community and, and, and be surrounded by people who, above all, love you the way you are. And, and the fact is, otherwise, you're, it's just going to be a toxic cloud above you you know so it's not yeah right or wrong or this is bad or this is good it's just how you create this toxic wave and how it influences you on your everyday and how it becomes a vampire of energy and just gives you stress and anxiety and comparison and everything else and i think to realize uh when you are getting this like you have to stop yourself and you have to stop for a second and think and ask yourself is this photo that i'm seeing now uh, helping me in any way exactly am i it's is this a uh, dancer that i'm observing now yeah. making me feel happier or is this dance class i'm going to making me feel happier or yeah. am i feeling bad and you have part of the responsibility yeah. on Definitely. stop stopping and exposing yourself to that and also sometimes it's just like yeah i feel uncomfortable because of this this and that it's not the fault of the other person is is yeah. Exactly. I feel uncomfortable because it's I'm telling to... myself oh, all of this, you know. about the other person. Because mm. the other mm. person is probably going through the same about someone else. Even though mm. to our eyes, they're perfect in everything we, oh, we envision so that complex. we could be. But everyone mm. is in this toxic relationship with, with comparison. What I think is it also, it also matters, you know, different stages of your life will also influence how you feel about these things. Like mm -hmm. if I am going through, I don't know, a good, a good phase of my life and I am in, a, in an up phase, uh, I will see other photos and I will just be like, good for you, really well done. Okay, this is really great. But I, if I'm in another mood, I'm like, ugh, I am horrible. I wish I could do this. And it just, it's, it's on you to decide to, you know, keep following because it might help you or okay, 
right now I'm going to stop following this person for two months because it's not healthy for me and for my exactly so but you need to take that perspective I that's not it's not an I need some time off hmm. that is okay hmm. it's not an easy thing to do though it's not easy to get there it's not easy Mm. It's not easy. Sometimes mm. I go like, okay, I'm going to do a cleanse on my Instagram right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it just happens. But I, I also wanted to ask you, how is um, this time and this, you know, coronavirus timing helping or what is it doing for your business at the moment? Mm, for my business, it's giving me a lot of time that I never had before to dedicate to my website and to all my uh, um, visibility. Like all of these Instagram lives that I'm doing right now, a lot of blog posts that I'm working on, a lot of free resources and things like I'm working on a new program to launch whenever I, I can finish it. But soon, it will be soon, just for beginners to start from scratch, to start dancing from scratch. And uh, all of this time that I'm having now to do this is precious, is precious. And yeah, I always complained about not having enough time. And now I have the now time. Now you do. Yeah. And yeah, uh, pa and, and I'm dancing a lot. I finally finished with my lovely housemates um, a dance studio in our living room. And it's glorious. It's, it's amazing. I'm I've so been happy. I've visiting you for over a year. And uh, every time I come there, okay, now you've done the walls, now you've done the floor, and now it's, it's just beautiful. And now I have the mirror wall. And that's, and, yeah. and that's just perfect for your online uh classes it's perfect exactly. for your YouTube and exactly. so exactly so I was already doing a lot of online stuff in a different format and now I can do online finally live online classes which I always wanted to do and I'm also taking a lot of classes with people I never thought I would take class like uh yeah like the internet is magical and i'm very aware of my privilege to be able to do all of this uh, so mm, not forgetting here about the people who is struggling because i feel your pain like i know what it's like but yeah i'm just doing the most i can and dancing is is helping me every single step on this way and it has also yeah. opened doors for more people to be able to see what you do and be able to, even from the comfort of their homes, you know, work on themselves through your classes. Totally. And, and that's and just so lovely. I'm having students, uh, I'm having students from uh, Barcelona, Canary Islands, South America. I'm having students from all over the world. And uh, I started with um, a new private student the other day. She's from United States. I'm so happy with her. Do you like, also one on ones? Yeah, I do one on ones. Uh -huh. Not many because I don't have that much time. So if anyone is interested, hurry up because I don't have that much time. And when I have my hours covered on one on ones, I don't I don't take any more students. But yes, I do. And yeah, it's like. It's magic. It's magic. Like getting to, to like people getting to me in this magical way. And, and this YouTube, like reaching uh, 11K subscribers for me was a gift. It was like, it's been a, a job I've been doing for four years, I think already, or something like that. And it's so magical when someone connects with the way I have to understand and to, and to teach dance. It's, it's so magical. And it doesn't yeah. matter where you are. If you have an internet connection, you can connect with me. I mean, that's, it's magic. It's like, wow. And I can connect with them as well. Like it's, woo. Yeah. That's mm. beautiful. Mm. Oh, um, Instagram live is letting me know that we have about one minute, 20 seconds to wrap Ooh. up today. Okay. Uh, I, I would like to have a few last words from you on body love. Uh, but before that, I also want to say that because of this live that we did today, I am offering 50% off in body love photo shoots for everyone who would love to work on themselves and feel like the true queens that they are. I'm offering a 50% discount. Uh, so uh, just contact me and we, and we can talk about that. It's for a limited time. And now back to you, my love. Last yeah. Time, body love. I just want to support your offer because having a photo shoot on Body Loved is the best thing you can do, like, boom. So just take action. It is scary to call a photo shoot, uh, to, to call a photographer and to go through the process of a photo shoot. It's scary, 
but it is amazing as well, like the internal transformation and the things you get to know about yourself. So I would just uh, encourage everyone to do that and to visit dancepandemic.com and join my online classes live or record it or whatever. Just join to the dance letter, my newsletter, where I share things that I don't share anywhere else. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> gotta, gotta give those perks. Yeah. Thank you so much, my love. Mwah. This was amazing. We have five seconds left. Thank you, everyone who watched. Bye. Close it, close it.